Hi, this is Paula from Sentimental by Nature. In our last video, uh, we discussed getting together all of our supplies and tools to start doing uh, Watercolor 101. The first thing that I'm going to cover with you is uh, working with the colors, uh, the, the very uh, minimal six color palette. And today's project are going to be these two color um, studies. So um, I'm going to show you this one first. This one is your, there's your lemon yellow, uh, gamboge hue, permanent rose, cadmium red deep hue, ultramarine, and intense blue. And the true colors, as you can see they're also marked along the top, the true colors are this diagonal line. This diagonal line is exactly how they come out of the tube. So um, by blending our six colors, this card will show you what just, just some of the colors that you can come up with um, when combining just two of those colors. So as you can see, there's, there's a wide range of, of color out of those six basic colors. So um, this is what we're going to start with, and um, these colors alone and that's what we're going to use today. And the other color study we're doing, because watercolors are transparent, but there are degrees of transparency with different types of color. And it's important to know which ones are truly transparent and which ones have um, a little bit of opacity to them for effects on the paper. So um, when you want different kinds of um, effects for landscape and fur and texture, you would want to choose that color because it actually has an opacity to it. If you look at lemon yellow, even though it's a very bright color and a very light color, you can see on, this is just Sharpie marker, um, but over top of that you can see a lot of color on it, which means it's, it's not completely transparent. There's a little bit of laying on top on this yellow. Um, the reds have a little bit, but not very much. And the blues, um, they don't have as much as that yellow. But it'll teach you a little bit about the paints that you're using. Um, it's go it, We're also going to cover basically um, doing wa washes a little bit on this card. So this is what you need to do. Um, to start off with is you need to have a few small pieces of paper. I would highly recommend that you use the paper that you are going to um, be drawing your, be uh, drawing and putting your paintings on because you'll also learn how your paper reacts to your paints. So um, basically to do this part you need a piece of paper and you don't have to do it this small. I do it this small so that you can see it on the camera and both at the same time. But um, if you have a T-rule that's helpful. It helps you keep making straight lines or just a plain regular ruler. Um, now the measurements really don't matter that much. Just for an example, um, this one is they are a centimeter wide and they're spaced by a half centimeter um, for the graph. You want a little space in between so because uh, watercolor, if one wet color touches another wet color, it will bleed together and you won't have a it will blend yet again so and you don't want that so you want some space in between on that one and the same on this one um, but you're just making a bar and these are also a centimeter wide by half a centimeter spacing and um, just leave a little bit in the top part and a little bit longer in the bottom part because we're gonna fade it so you can see just how trans how um, light and how dark you can make your pigments uh, and this is honestly just Sharpie marker. So you're going to need paper, rulers, pencil, possibly an eraser, and Sharpie marker. Uh, go ahead and lay your grids. Um, I'll remove this so you can look at it. So um, you, like I said, you can make them larger. You can make them an inch. You could make them in a half inch wide. Uh, but just make sure you leave some spaces. So um, go ahead and put me on pause. I will be waiting for you to return. And um, when you're ready with the graphs, we will get started painting. 
and painting. We are going to start with this one and we are going to a little dusty in here. So this will be a lemon yellow. You really only need a very small amount of paint. So that would be your lemon yellow. And your gamboge hue. And again, I'm using Cotman if you want to really um, Different, different brands do have somewhat different um, colors. So the using the same paints will get you a, a closer color to what I'm displaying, although the video, no video camera really picks up the true colors. So there's going to be some variation in that. But what's on your paper if you're using the same paint brand should actually be a similar result regardless of what you see on the screen. Alrighty. And uh, so lemon yellow, permanent rose, gamboge, cadmium red, Ultramarine and intense or phthalo blue. And you only need a very little bit of that. They are not joking when they say intense. So um, the reason I set up the palette this way is the cool colors are on top, the warm colors are on the bottom. So I'm going to move these out of my way real quick here. And I am going to be using today my number six. And the piece is out of the way. And you really don't need to tape this one down. It shouldn't buckle that much on you. If you want to, you can take a board and tape it down. I'm not just so I have more room to work underneath the camera. I want to make sure you guys it's in good in, and in the shot. So, and always have your water bucket. Sorry, I need to fill my sponge for cleaning off my brushes. And again, I always have a washcloth, a paper towel, and my sponge. All right, so wet your brush, and we're going to start with the lemon yellow. Get a little bit of water on your brush and make it wet, and it's about the consistency of cream, maybe a little thinner, maybe milk. All right, so we're going to start at the very top here. I'm going to drop a little more color in the top. All right. I'm going to dab a little bit of that color off on my paper towel and pick up a little water, and I'm going to bring the water into it and pull it down. And as you can see, I'm going right over this black right here. Now I'm going to dab off a little more color. I'm going to pick up some more water, dab a little bit of the water off, start just below it, and pull a little bit more down. What you're creating right now is the dry is dry. It's wet to dry technique, but we're still doing a color wash. I'm taking off some more water and some more color, and as you can see, it's barely yellow. I'm gonna blend that in and run it down. Now, here's the fun part. Watercolor, I'm gonna rinse my brush off. Watercolor has a neat effect. 
in that if you tilt it slightly, the water runs down to the end. You'll make a puddle. If you dry your brush off a little bit and just touch, it pulls it off. Um, if you left that down there, what would happen is it would be a little bit darker down here. And what I'm doing is actually pulling up the color to make this the lightest part of this bar possible. I want you really to be able to have a, a couple of reference pieces. And these, are, if you make them small, you can you can actually slip them in to um, a notebook or what have you. So you always have them as a reference for what colors you have. Every time I buy a new color, every time I make a new setup of my palette, I do this over again um, because I want to know what can I make, what colors can I make with what I have on hand. And this is a really, really good way to explore your colors, um, what you have, not what someone else has, but what you have. And I want you to rinse your brush really well, dry it off, make sure you don't have any color on it, get a little bit more water. And now I'm going to have you go into the gamboge, I need a little more water than that. and same thing here we're gonna mix it up until it is the consistency of cream now if you were used if you've already put them in your palette and you're you and they're dry you might want to drop water from a dropper on each one to reconstitute them before you start painting um, I used it straight out of the tube so it was already in a liquid form now we're going to do the gamboge and just start here. I'm going to pick up a little bit of color and just put a few drops here. I'm going to take again some of the pigment off my paint brush, dip it in the water, take a little more off, and I'm going to start down here. See how much lighter it is? But I'm going to go back into that color so they meet. Again, take some paint pigment off, dip it, remove the excess water, and again and we are going to go right over the black bar again remove some of the pigment pick up some water tap off some excess water and run it back in again removing some of the pigment picking up more water and remove a little more pigment gamboge can be pretty powerful so and run it down so they're all going together now and I'm gonna rinse my brush pretty well and dry it pretty well because I know what's coming next and I think you do too so we're gonna tilt it on its side and allow you can see the colors starting to move the pigment itself move you're seeing the texture be of the paper behind the paint and I'm gonna remove that puddle that starts forming because again like I said before I really want you to have a, a good idea of just how light you can go with these paints and if you ever make a mistake and have a puddle or something too dark just rinse your brush dry it off and it'll pull that liquid right up for you but you can see how the paint is starting to move down with the bit of a tilt okay so rinse your brush really well and get a little bit of water on that brush and we are going to go into the permanent rows I need a little more water than that and again mixing up the paint until you have a uniform consistency dab a little bit off on the side and we're going to start at the top again and I'm going to dab off a bit of that pigment, pick up a little water, dab it again, and come in here and meet up with it. This ensures that you do not have harsh lines. Sometimes you want harsh lines, but most of the time when you're doing a wash, you do not want a harsh line. So dab the pigment off, pick up some water, and pull it through. Dab off the pigment, pick up some water, take off the excess water, pull it up and so it's a little repetitive because we're going to be doing this six times with our six different colors and tilt the page 
and watch the color happen. Now, if at any point you, it needs a little help to, to move, like this part didn't take, sometimes in a painting you want that. You want a little bit of an organic occurrence happening. Um, and sometimes you don't. And a lot of people are intimidated by watercolor because they think, oh, once it hits the paper, you can't pull it back up. Well, you can. Um, some paints are very staining, so you can't pick all of it back up. But some you can pull up. Doing this, doing this little project, you're going to know which ones you can pick up like this to almost a white sheet of paper again and which ones you will not be able to. So I love doing these. I learn a lot about my paints. I learn a lot about my papers and how, how, the, how the water moves. Um, so I really enjoy doing them. Um, some people find them tedious, but they are very educational. Okay, so next we're going to rinse our brush really well and pick up some water and we're going to go into that cadmium red and mix it up. And I apologize for my camera shaking a little bit. I have it on my drafting light and my table's a little shaky. Alright, so I'm going to take off some of this pigment and get a little water and dab the water off and come back in here. As you can see, I didn't get enough water. I actually dabbed a little too much off, so I come back in with a little more water and move that around a little bit. Okay, remove some pigment, pick up some water, dab a little bit off, and pull it through. You should be getting a little more confident about how you're moving this water, getting a little faster, understanding how it's moving and how you're controlling it to some extent and some of it the paper is happening. It was one of the reasons why I've explained that the paper is so important um, and knowing how your paper reacts is, is important to tilt it a little bit and if you notice it pooling you just pick it up. So there the red is finished. Rinse your brush really well and get a little bit of water and go into that ultramarine and pick a little bit of that up dab off some of the color, pick up some water, dab off some of the excess water and bring that in. Dab off the pigment, pick up color, dab off a little of the water and bring it through. Dab off the color, pick up the water, I'm confusing myself now. And a little dry up there so I'm just re-wetting it a little bit so I can show you the movement and we're gonna have a puddle at the bottom I can tell already so we're getting ready to remove some of this color and just a light touch and it removes any of the harsh lines and rinse your brush really well get some water. You're going to need a lot of water for this particular color. It is truly intense. So, and I, as you can tell, I used far less of this paint than any other one. And I'm going to really work at removing some of this pigment off this brush more than I did the other ones. And you can see it's still got a lot of pigment on it. And remove the pigment on your paper towel pick up a little water, dab the excess water, remove some pigment, pick up some water, remove the excess water. Again, remove the pigment, pick up some water, remove a little of the excess water. I'm going to make this, it's drying very quickly today. Oh, I kind of messed up that part. See, and I, if you can see, I, I moved that pigment right back up there. There's a lot more forgiveness in watercolor than people re really give credit. So, and then 
almost pure water at this point. And you notice, because this is a, a very high pigmented color, it pulled that color right down. I'm going to dry my brush, and I'm going to pick up a little of this even before I tip it. And then I'm going to tip it. And you notice I tilted it a little bit that way, so that pigment would be a little more consistent. And you can move it around a little bit. Play with it. While it's wet, play with it a little bit. So that is your basic dry to wet wash. That's how you do that one. So you've already learned one technique on painting and you've learned all of what your colors look like in various concentration. And that's tone. That's what artists refer to as the tone. So, um, and you can make these darker very easily by layering. That's, that's the beauty of watercolor. It's transparent and you can make layers. So long as you let your paper dry completely, adding layers will not damage your paper. If it is wet and you scrub on it or you keep going back in, you can actually damage the paper because the paper gets softer. But if you allow it to dry, like right now, you can tell whether it's dry or not by how much shine it has. There's a little bit of shine to the gamboge, but there is no shine on that lemon whatsoever. So I could, if I wanted to, if I wanted to make it darker, I can go right back in with that yellow and drop some more yellow in there and make that darker using the same technique we did before. A little bit of water added each time dabbing the excess color off and that is going to be another layer of it. It's going to create a more intense color um, and I can now the gamboge is almost dry and I think I'm safe to to do it here too and I just want to show you see now watercolor does always dry lighter than what it was at first but that you can already tell is going to be darker than what it was before and bring this down and blend it together and one more so if you lay your paint and it's not dark enough let it dry lay another layer it's called glazing that's the technique um, I'm going to go into the permanent rows and do it here. So, adding more color, more pigment. As you can see, darkens it up. And then into the cadmium red. Oh, cad red has got some intense color going on here right now. So you've just learned glazing now. And I'm going to do the blue, ultramarine blue. I want a really dark bar up there so we can really see what we can get going from this tube. And it's not quite moving as much as the others did, so I'm going to tilt it a little bit assist it to run. Let me pick up a little bit here and blend that just slightly. So we've got one more and that's that intense blue but you can see where the ones that I've, I've gone back over and glazed you can really see the gradation in color now and the different tone that you can make with it. So we're going to go back into this intense blue and I'm going to drop quite a bit of it here and dab off a lot of that pigment, pick up some water and go in here 
dab, pick up water, dab again, and dab, pick up water, and move down. And I'm going to, see I turned it a little sideways, you can see it moving. And if I want that color bar at the end to be really dark, you can always tip it the opposite way and create a pool. But I want a little bit of gradation here. So, and I'm going to lay that flat because I kind of like that. I'm going to pull a little bit of this out and move this around just slightly. Play with it. Play with it in this step on these charts. These are for you. No one else. Um, understand your pigment. Understand how they move. Manipulate them. And then when you're painting, you'll be far more confident about how you can manipulate, how you can pick up color, how you can add more color down. So this one, we learned tone, which is the, from dark to light. And we learned putting wet pigment to dry paper, so wet to dry technique. We learned glazing, which is allowing the, the painting once with a lighter color, coming back in with the same color, the same thing we mixed, layering it again, making it darker. Um, so, and we've learned how to pick up pools of water. We've learned how to with this, this that, that technique allows you to pull up pigment and create a lighter, almost white area. So we, we learned quite a bit just doing this. Now once it's dry, you'll be able to see on this black bar how opaque, how transparent your colors are. As you can already see, I think, the lemon yellow, see, it's right there. It's got color showing over the black, which means it's got a little bit of opacity to it. So that's this one. The next one we're going to do is going to be the mixing. Um, this video is running a little bit long, so I'm going to actually make this another video. So uh, be prepared. This one's going to be the next one, and see you back soon.